Are you kidding? Is that actually how much money we made this month? Yeah. <laughs> Rightio guys, today's video is a very requested one and it is all about money. So how much we spend, how much we make and uh, how much you can actually make on the internet because today's day and age, internet money, internet occupation is a booming thing and That's not crazy. many people speak about how much you can make on YouTube, um, how sponsorships and stuff work, how much time goes into it. So if you are new to the channel, this is Sarah, I'm Keelan. We've been traveling around Australia for a few years now in a caravan. Uh, we set off, we didn't want it, well, we didn't mean for it to go like this. We didn't actually know that it would become our full-time job, but um, it has. And thanks to you guys supporting us, we've now made this our full-time job and we are very proud to make you smile hopefully teach you something and sort of be on your TV screens every week. So the reason not many people know about this topic is because no one likes to talk about it. So today we're going to be sharing a lot more than others do. We are going to be pretty um, vulnerable, I guess, because yeah, it's not the easiest thing to talk about like personal finance, but hopefully we can teach you guys some stuff and help you inspire you and potentially get you guys on the road living a life that you could only dream of. So. Let's get into that um, and at the end of the video we're going to be showing you the computer screen which literally shows shows us and you guys how much money we make this month off YouTube. So it's going to be a live how much we made this month off YouTube with 83,000 subscribers. So last, last time, time we, we did this it was 40,000 subscribers. So <laughs> it's pretty much double. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Before we get into it we have to say a massive thank you to the people watching right now and I'm talking to you because without you None of this happens, so we feel It'd be obliged. Like teaching and sparky work. Yeah, that's right. So we both have trades. This is not the only way to do it. This is just the way we've done it. So the yeah. proof is in our pudding. We've actually done this, and we're going to teach you some things that we wish we knew at your stage if you are wanting to do this. And it might save you some heartache, save yeah. you some money, some time. Things we learned over the last yeah. three years. Yeah, and, and we, trial and error. We wish someone told us this. Yeah. We've effed a lot of things up, trust me. We've stuffed, we still do. We still stuff it up, we're still making it up. Anyway, let's stop flapping the gums. Let's, let's put some socks on some centipedes and get into it. Alrighty-o, so the first thing we're gonna to touch on is our budget. And this is a very controversial topic. People get very, very, very upset. When we talk about budget. So if you are one of those people, get ready to be triggered. <laughs> Don't get triggered. It's just what we spend and we're gonna show you and we'll how show you we do how it. we do it. Yeah, yeah. we got click and collects, we got evidence, we got facts. So let's go anyway, through the facts. Uh, the purpose of us sharing our cheap budget or how we try and keep costs down is purely to help you guys and to show you that it is possible. So if you are traveling and you're looking at ways of cutting down, please just take this as um, positive. I don't know. Yeah. Something to aim for because <laughs> at the end of the day, if we can do it, anyone can do it because we literally suck. But Keeping in mind, we don't eat breakfast, so yeah. that is a massive shortcut. We just don't eat it out of laziness, plus we like to eat huge dinners, so yeah. we normally wake up still full. <laughs> so um, Sarah actually eats as much as me, fun fact, and she's, <gasps> half, she's half my <laughs> weight. Stitching me up. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm 100 kilos and she's like 50 and she eats the same amount as me. So anyway, that's a weird topic. Let's keep, what are we going I'm on? I'm so off track already. Fuel. <laughs> Fuel. <laughs> Are we on fuel we'll yet? About food. Oh yeah. All right, so we went very off topic then, but our main costs on the road are fuel, groceries, accommodation, eating out, experiences, repairs and maintenance, phone and internet. Costs that we don't include in our weekly budget because we pay for them annually so that we can save money and we don't have that burden on the road. That's a tip too. Pay it annually yeah. if you can because it's, it's cheaper. cheaper. And your rego won't run out on you when you're at Uluru and you don't know because you didn't get the notification. Which so. nearly happened to us. Yeah. Well, yeah, cylinders. I think rego goes off cylinders. So yeah. some people have four cylinders. So we're not going to put insurances and registrations in there because everyone's set up, everyone's costs are going to be different there. So keeping in mind, that's not included in this budget breakdown. So it's a weekly budget. Yeah. Yeah. So our um, rego is around $1,000 a year. And then our insurances, we have to insure our car and obviously our caravan that we're in right now. And all up, that is around four to $5,000 a year. Yeah. And that hurts. And everyone's <laughs> like, oh, you guys don't own a, own a house. Yeah, we don't pay rates, but we pay a lot of insurance. And to give you a bit of background, this van actually costs more to insure than mum and dad's freaking house, yeah, which I don't crazy. know how that works, but- 
higher risk. You're driving around with them all the time. Well, there you go. So anyway, it's that's not the cheapest part about what we yeah. do. That hurts the budget um, hard. We don't go with like any of the four-wheel drive club sort of ones. So we just go with a standard insurance company purely because they are a lot cheaper. If you want to have that four-wheel drive cover, um, it almost costs, double yeah, yeah it costs a lot more yeah. but you are um, insuring on a lot more yeah. tracks but saying that I think we got quoted five grand to insure the 200 series just the, the, the car so it was gonna be like 12 grand all up we so. couldn't afford that yeah. there's no way so the huge announcement is I'm doing the world's greatest shave to raise as much money as possible for leukemia and help as many people as possible but I need your help so I've got a page set up here on the world's greatest shave. I'll put the link in a QR code just to the side here. I would super appreciate it if everyone could just donate $1. My goal is $40,000 to hopefully help as many people as possible. We're not just gonna be doing any world's greatest shave though. We're gonna be having a bit of fun with it. And every week we're gonna be shaving a new hairstyle, hairstyle <laughs> into my head. And you guys are gonna be choosing what hairstyle I get every single week for a few weeks until I shave my head completely bald. So I'm getting all of our sponsors on board with this guys. Hopefully you can join us. 10% of all of our merch as well is going to this cause. So if you did want something tangible and to donate to the charity, go on our website, buy some merch and 10% is gonna go. To start this off, we're gonna be donating at $500 straight away to this pledge. Hopefully we can raise $40,000, that's my goal. But anyway, we need your help. Please tell as many people about this cause. Let's raise a stupid amount of money to help as many people for this cause. And yeah, it's super sad what's happening. And yeah, the least I can do is shave my head, so. Things that we pay for annually, so that when we're traveling, we do not have to stress about them all. So this is our weekly breakdown. <laughs> so each week we have our main cost, which is fuel. Fuel at the moment is sitting at a it's dollar. Around, it's around a dollar eighty at the moment, yeah, which is pretty cheaper. Well, last time we made this video, I was at two dollars thirty, so yeah. it's come back down a little bit. So that's been good with the V eight. Obviously, yeah. we chew it. So we try not to travel too far. So we're looking at only traveling around An two hour. to three hours a week. Yeah, our, we only drive an hour a day max if we have yeah. to. So um, so we try and keep it around two to three hundred dollars every fortnight, which is like let's say $150 on fuel a week. Yeah, that'd be about right, I'd say. Yeah. Um, obviously, if we're doing a massive trip, like we just went from Norman Boy up in NT all the way down the centre of Australia and then down to Melbourne, we spent thousands of dollars of fuel in a week. Yeah. So yeah. you've got to factor in how many kilometres are you going to do a week? Are you doing a fast lap or are you going slow like us and you can actually just spend a few hundred dollars a week on fuel? Yeah, and we do that to save money, obviously, but also because... If you can like drive and just check stuff out slowly, obviously you've got enough time to smell the roses, have a look around, because if you don't look out the window and you're just pe pegging it somewhere to get there quickly, you're just gonna miss all that stretch of Australia. So we sort of use it to save money, but also have more enjoyable time while we're yeah. traveling. And going slow is fun, everyone, you know, Everyone expects it, so just go slow, have a yeah. good time, and, and chill out. But if out. you don't have that much time on your hands, then... You might have to peg it. <laughs> yeah, factor in more for fuel. <laughs> our next one is our groceries, and we were budgeting around $100 a week. <laughs> I would say now we're looking at more $150, $200 a week as a couple, and that is like splurging on a few things here and there. We don't eat breakfast, we don't really buy chocolate, we don't really buy snacks, like the only snacks we buy is those dollar scotch fingers from Cobbles. So. <laughs> yeah, they're so good, but they dunking them in, <laughs> in a bit of coffee. We got the coffee machine, scotch finger in it. That yeah. is the best smoko, I swear to God. Yeah, normally we'll go shopping like once a fortnight. I buy all of our meat in bulk, so I'll get a kilo mint, the big kilo chicken, and then we section it all up and we freeze it, and then we'll cook like one big spaghetti bog or one big tacos, and we'll eat it for a few nights in a row. So. We're not necessarily cooking something new and fresh every single night. We're like eating the same thing for a few nights. And then for lunches, we just have soups or wraps or something. And Easy. that's pretty affordable. And the reason we stretch out our meals too is one, save money, two, because we're lazy, and three. You don't have to cook every night. Yeah. Who, well, we, is that what your third one was? Yeah, well, I don't <laughs> like cooking. I know Sarah doesn't 100% like it either, but if yeah. you asked Harry Fisher the same thing, <laughs> he'd probably love to cook his Wagyu steak every second night. So anyway. One of his meals is probably our whole budget. <laughs> yeah, pretty well. That's not including KFC too. We do eat KFC. We love KFC. Yeah. 
and we try to get it every time we go past one. We've got our own section for eating out. Oh, do we? <laughs> oh, we're getting to that. <laughs> um, if you do want a few ideas for different recipes that we have on the road, we have released a little cheap and easy cookbook. Um, it's not a fancy cookbook at all. It is literally just an ebook, and it has a few of our favorite recipes that are easy to make, cheap, and delicious. So delicious. That is on our website at sarahandkeelandtravels.com.au. And it's only nine ninety five, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, so that's the, like, the price of one meal. <laughs> You'll probably save that money just on your first shop if you do what we do. Yeah. Anyway. Um, our next cost is accommodation. Now, this one is getting harder and harder and harder because at the start of our travels, we just budgeted like 50 to $60 a week. This is and three years ago, so just keep well, that in mind. Well, and last year even. Yeah, well last year was good because once we got sort of in the outback, it was a lot cheaper because yeah. you can just pull up on the side of the road. Yeah. But if anyone's traveled the East Coast, we're from WA, um, here's getting crazy at the moment, but yeah. the East Coast, we just had to get caravan parks and, and paid camps a lot of the time. There's not yeah. many free camps around now. So. so we always tried to free camp, but yeah, it's just getting really hard at the moment. In WA, we try and stick to national park camps, which are eight dollars per adult per night so that's nearly twenty dollars a night yeah. for camping yeah. um and we're probably going to budget this year that we're going to be in a twenty dollar camp every single night uh, we're lucky that we don't need to go to caravan parks we do have our own washing machine in the caravan and like enough power so yeah, yeah. the only time we really need to go into a town to a caravan park or just to fill up water and stuff yeah. so we're pretty lucky in that respect but yeah, I guess accommodation's getting ridiculous. Like when we first started, we classed a really expensive caravan park that we had to go to and do some like showering and like proper showering and stuff and washing. We were like 30 bucks. We're like, poof, that's bloody, that's bloody steep, it's mate. Steep. We're thinking, geez, tell him he's joking, you know, or tell him he's dreaming, you know what I mean? But now we see like a $60 a night and we think, you know what, that's actually an average price these it's days. So bad. Which, it's scary because camping and caravanning, I'm sure a lot of you guys can agree with this, it used to be a pastime that literally anyone can afford to do. Like when I was growing up as a grommet, like that was cheap, easy, um, fun, you know what I mean? With your parents or whatever. And now, you know, families are getting stung hard for kids and, and even dogs sometimes yeah. are getting charged per night. Like, well, we put a um, thing up on Instagram yesterday and we were asking people like, what is their most unexpected travel expense and so many people said it was the cost of caravan parks now the laundry at the caravan parks and yep. people charging extra for kids or yeah dogs. dogs people charge for dogs now which is just it's crazy but there is more people doing it mm. people have got to make a buck but um yeah just keep in mind it is getting pretty pricey and uh so we're yeah. looking at around 150 dollars a week yeah um if you do need to go to more caravan parks the average cost of our of Aravan Parks. <laughs> Average Aravan Parks. <laughs> Average cost of Caravan Parks at the moment in Australia is around 50 to $60 for a couple. Yeah. Um, all right, so our next expense is eating out. Yeah, baby. And typically for us, eating out means we go and visit KFC. <laughs> mm, shut up and take my money. So that is literally only $20. We use the app so that we can get cheaper meals. Um, Zingers. If you, yeah. If you love KFC, download the app. There's heaps of cheap deals on there. So literally that's our $20 a week. And then if we decide that we want to go out for like a pub meal or something, we go for palmy night or steak yeah. night and get something cheap. A palmy for us is like treating it, you know, yeah. like we reckon we've made it when you pull up to the pub get a schooner or a pot or a pint and uh, sit down with a palmy. That's, that's when we think like, you know, we're pretty satisfied with life at that point. So we're going to add all this up by the way. So don't stress if you're not paying attention to the numbers at the end, we're going to show you exactly what this all equals up to per week. So you get a good understanding. So we're going to do that in a minute anyway. All right. So our next expense is our experiences. Uh, for us, we sound like the biggest cheapskate. We, we are. We don't tend to do that many paid experiences. We sort of budget to do one per state and that works well for us. Yeah. Like it's quite expensive to go do these touristy things. So we've done like swimming on the Great Barrier Reef, whale swimming sharks. with whale sharks. Um, um, we've done seal tour as well. Yeah, we've yeah. done a heap of cool stuff. Yeah, we have. Skydived. Um, yeah. yeah. So we, we definitely do stuff. We just don't tend to do it that much. So we yeah. put in our budget around $50 a week that we set aside so that when something comes up, we do have money sitting there that we can use on that. Um, and that works well for us. There is always free stuff to do in towns. Like yeah. 
and the activities that we enjoy to do, like heel and surfs, that's free. Fishing, you just got to yeah. buy bait and tackle, which is getting expensive too, but <laughs> it's cheap fun, you know, yeah. like we have a lot of fun just doing not much, you know what I mean? <laughs> so nothing. we're cruising around, going for a surf, going yeah. for a fish, and that's like what we love to do. So Go for driving pretty, or something. Yeah, pretty lucky really. Uh, the next one is repairs and maintenance. So we service our car every $5,000. <laughs> Oh that God. does it's not five thousand dollars <laughs> five thousand kilometers <laughs> oh. but the thing is with that i drop the oil every five thousand then do filters every ten thousand so you don't have to do that that's probably yeah. being a bit pedantic but and hey, the cost for all of the oils and stuff yeah, it's about two two hundred to two fifty roughly what i get it for which that's yeah. good engine oil semi-synthetics with filters all that and then i just i don't even put cost on my time so yeah 250 bucks a service pretty yeah. much every so 5,000. So does all of our services himself and then when we need something really big done we either wait till we're home or we're waiting until we're in like a big town yeah. and then we get it done at a Toyota or a reputable place. So, yeah. But the thing yeah. is with that is that we've been very lucky touch wood. Uh, we see a lot of people having a lot worse of time with maintenance and repairs than us. Don't know why that is. We punish our gear yeah. pretty hard, but we also look after it pretty hard as well. So every time we've done a big trip like Gib River Road or Cape York, Touch we've done. When you say this, please. <laughs> we have done something to the car. So we did starter <laughs> motor on Gib River Road, and we did alternator, alternator at on Cape, the Cape York. Yeah. So that both those times that was around a thousand dollars. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we have done stuff to our car, and we have had a few repairs, but it hasn't been like catastrophic stuff. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you are planning on doing like Gibber River Road, Cape York, any like really hectic four wheel drive tracks, then probably add to your budget unexpected repairs because you've just got to expect it when you're doing stuff like that. Yep. Um, we do have a few things that we use to try and protect ourselves when we do trips like that. So we have I check tire pressure monitoring system yep. that so, monitors the tire pressures. Funnily and, enough, a lot of people think it's to protect your tires, but it's actually not. That's actually are you the, about to prove me wrong. Well, no, that's the third reason why you have that. So the first reason is it's to protect your life. Okay, that's the number one thing. The second thing is is to protect your rims because you know what it's like, Sarah. A lot of these places in remote Australia sell tires. You can get a tire, even if it's a secondhand shitty one, you can bang that on the rim. But if the rims bug it you're stuffed, you're cooked. No one sells rims. So it's actually to yeah, protect your rims, protect your life, and then thirdly, protect your tyres. So if you are interested in one of those, Sam is making the best tyre pressure monitoring systems that I check, TPMS. And uh, if you use that code SKT10, that'll get you 10% off. And yeah, that that's our go-to, best one in Australia, hands down. Yeah. So anyway. I've never, like anytime we've had a flat or anything, we've caught it in time to be able to get the repair kit out, put a gummy worm in there, and then we like doing all the 5,000 Ks on that same tire. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, our next one is our phone and our internet. So we are both with Telstra, we pay $68. Actually, we just dropped our phones. Yeah, we dropped it to about 50 something, so we're around 100 bucks combined yeah. just for our um, phone internet. And we dropped that because we upgraded and got Starlink, which is $174 a month. Yep. Now the reason that we have Starlink is because now this is a full time small business so we do need internet all the time to be able to run this business and because we have Starlink we then didn't need heaps of phone data so we dropped all of those down. But we've still got to remember where we came from because at the start when we first started this trip we were running our whole YouTube thing and uploading videos which sometimes take hours to upload. All of our hotspots. Yeah so we were hotspotting <laughs> our phone reception to our computer and sometimes I Oki strapped my phone on a spear gun and then put it on the roof of the caravan to try to get that one bar reception so I could upload a YouTube video yeah. and just like stealing people's internet as well like trying well, to we just did not do that. oh we're not allowed to say that <laughs> we anyway we come from the slums of internet so to McDonald's have McDonald's Wi-Fi yeah got to work out so yeah oh, true McDonald's has got good Wi-Fi but Anyway, I thought I'd throw that in there. You don't yeah. need Starlink to start. You can definitely make do, and we did for two years without yeah. Starlink. So, yeah, Starlink. It's Starlink's very expensive. And 170, isn't it, a month? Yeah, it's crazy. So, yeah, you can definitely do it from your phone. And what we used to do when we knew we needed to upload a video for a Friday night, we would just make sure that we were somewhere with service. So whether that meant that we pulled over on the side of the road, sat in the car for a few hours, uploaded our video, and then went into camp. We just made do, so yep. it is 100% possible. You Doable. don't need Starlink. Yeah, yep. so we're looking at for phone and internet, 
170 ish for Starlink and then 100 bucks for personal combined. So we're looking at around 270 a month for internet, which is ridiculously expensive. And it's probably up there with one of our biggest costs. So yeah. Okay, so a breakdown of what we just went through. So fuel was around $150 a week. I'll just add this up while you're saying it. Yep, just double check. Groceries were 150 to 200 so Let's that's just go 150. 150. Yep. Accommodation, we are looking at $140 a week, which is $20 a night. Eating out, well, normally it's $20, but let's go $35 a week. Uh, phones and so the phones were it was 270 for the phones and the internet 270 divided by four i'm sparky so seven so 70 i was right how sick so was that 70 dollars a week for phones and internet 30 dollars a week for our maintenance which is um servicing the car yep and, and that's averaged across the whole year too guys 20 dollars a week for repairs which was based off that thousand dollars a year <laughs> touch wood it so could be a lot more than that at? So we're looking at 600 bucks, yeah. not including our insurances, not including our booze, because that's one thing else that oh, we didn't speak yes. about is that I drink some beers per night, other blokes drink some more beers per night, if you know what I mean. So I think I just found the ultimate VB utility belt. You can't factor in yeah. if you're drinking a carton a night and, and I'm this drinking year one. I've been trying to cut down on our alcohol intake, so <laughs> get Look, away from me we've right talked now. About this. <laughs> <laughs> so our, our weekly budget has gone from five hundred dollars a week to now six hundred dollars a week. So but it's only in, gone up a touch. Let's talk all inclusive for people. For us, I reckon we should add another two hundred bucks when you do insurances, booze, all that stuff. So I reckon roughly around that $800 mark a week, that's all inclusive of all of our costs. Now, with the business, um, it's there's a few additional costs, uh, which we're not gonna factor in because it varies from week to week. Sometimes, you know, our laptop yeah. might break or something, but that d doesn't inhibit you actually traveling Australia. Yeah. Um, for and instance- we do have like subscriptions for YouTube. So like royalty-free music, Adobe, yeah, which is a good segue yeah. too, because now we'll get into how we make money and the incoming money. But to give yeah. you an idea today, we just went, we we're leaving on our trip tomorrow up the WA coast and we had to go buy new portable hard drives to yeah. keep all of our footage and stuff. New headphones, new. check out these, they're a bit fancy. So these, <laughs> these were 170 bucks and they're the flashest headphones I've ever owned in my life. <laughs> I don't even know what to do with them. Normally I have these poxy little ones and that's, what we've been making vids on, but they broke the other day, so I needed a new set. So today, two hard drives, set of headphones, it's like 700 bucks. Yeah. And you know, like how- We do have a blog up on our website, and it is a breakdown of all of the things that we use to create content, and like all of the programs and stuff. So if you want, are interested in exactly what we use, you can go and have a look at that blog, and it breaks it down for you, and then you can like see a rough added cost of this, whole yeah, YouTube thing. thing. Yeah. <laughs> it, look, we, we're pretty unorganized. We couldn't organize a rock fight in a quarry at the moment, <laughs> but we are trying our best to break it down for you guys, but it does get juicier here. This is what everyone wants to know, whether you want to start a YouTube channel or you just invested and you want to learn more about what we do and a, a few insights. So let's get into some, how we bloody make the moolah, how much moolah is they making? These yeah. are the questions we're going to answer. And if you do want to see a written blog of our whole budget breakdown, that is also on our website. So yep. if you didn't take notes just now, just go to our website and everything is there for you. And this is where we're going to be dropping all the cool tips, things we learnt, all that good stuff. So let's go. <laughs> all right. So we let's talk about how long it takes us to do what we do with YouTube and social media. Yeah, because it's all well and good telling you how much money we make but how are we uh, swapping our time? How much time are we swapping to earn that amount of money? You know what I mean? And then the next question is, hey, 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 that, that doesn't go in our budget. Sarah just you broke can. the pen. <laughs> anyway, it's all well and good talking about how much we make, but how much time are we swapping for that amount of money? So we're gonna break all that down. Um, and yeah, let's do that. So do you wanna start off with? Firstly, I handle our Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, blog, and emails, and 
accounting and stuff. And yep. Keelan is the YouTube guru, so he does not a guru. All of the editing, all of the weird, quirky things that you see on YouTube is all thanks to this brain. Because <laughs> I'll just be editing, and then I'll be like, oh, let's throw in something here, and then I just have an idea, <laughs> and then I just go do it, and then I don't show Sarah. So if you don't show them, like, if you don't show Sarah, she can't say no. So I would never say no. I don't really care what people <laughs> think. <laughs> anyway. Let's do it. All right. So let's talk. talk about your stuff. So as Sarah said, she does probably 60%. I do 40% with Maybe. just the YouTube. Um, so roughly a day for me on average is I'll wake up every morning. I do three, three hours of editing. Normally this is why we're traveling. Um, we go out and film for four, four hours, four or five hours a day, doing some cool stuff, having some fun. You know, you guys come along for that ride, um, but it's all the stuff you don't see. So that's about four hours. Come home dump all that footage onto my computer, onto that hard drive that I just bought, and um, yeah, get all the SD cards cleared off, imported into my iMovie. So I run iMovie, which is free editing software. Um, again, you don't need the flash of stuff to do what we do. And like, people think that YouTubers are these, I'm just, sorry, on a tangent too. Oh, here we go. People think YouTubers and people on your TV screen are like special people, you know, whatever. We're not, we're normal people. All we have is a camera and an internet access. Literally, we are not special. We're the exact same as you guys and anyone can do what we do, especially and with free software. we don't believe that just because you start making money means that you need to spend more money. So like we've literally kept our budget, our savings exactly the same as how they were from when we took off and we were making $50 a week to now and you'll see how much we're making a week. We don't spend any more. So like we've heard people talking and saying like, oh yeah, Sarah Gillen must have like all this flash editing stuff now that they're making money. And we're like, no, nope. <laughs> we have free, <laughs> free editing software. We only use one camera that's pretty modest, a GoPro. Sometimes we even use a phone and a DJI mini drone, which is one of your cheapest drones too. So we use very bare minimal, bare basic stuff. And like I said, you don't need to be some special person or anything like that. We are like the most average people in the world. And yeah, we just had a crack at this thing and used all the free stuff in the world. And yeah, bought a camera, bang, made a few vids. And you know, just to give you an idea, but the amount yeah. The time you put in will reflect on how well you do on yep. your YouTube. So three hours in the morning editing, filming for about four or five hours, get home two or three hours importing the footage into iMovie by that stage. Sarah actually cooks dinner for me a lot of the nights, thank God, because we'd be eating crappy food otherwise. <laughs> and um, dinner's ready, and then after dinner, that's when we actually get like an hour or two where we're actually not doing anything regarding our um, YouTube or our Instagram, and we actually get to lay down, watch, watch a, bit a bit of TV, of you just <laughs> just random stuff. Every now and again, I'll, I'll flick through the TikTokers and have a bit of a squiz there, but yeah, that's when we get to chill out, have a bit of um, snooze time and then we wake up and repeat. And we do that seven days a week, pretty much. Um, we love what we do. And I actually class the filming side of things as not working, because that's super fun. We have a lot of fun, we laugh our ass off, we get into trouble. Um, but when we're sitting down and editing, like I'm ADD and I'm like sitting at a laptop trying to focus, and I've got like 10 hours of editing ahead of me and it is freaking, yeah. it, it sucks. It's like, like any job. There's yeah. always a part of your job that you hate, like in teaching, I love teaching my classes, going on camps, like that was the best part about my job. But when it came to doing kids' reports and marking their work, like it sucks, it's so boring. Yeah. So You're telling me you don't even read the kids' work, you just give, <laughs> them, all, give them all C's. No, oh my gosh. <laughs> no, just, just kidding. Um, but yeah, anyway, there's always, like Sarah said, there's always bad things about jobs. And for me, editing is the, the bad thing. But I think it's just because of the person I am and I'm a bit hyperactive. So yeah, that's yeah. that's where it's at. But, I reckon on average I do about 50 weeks, so I guess let's break down what you do. 50 weeks? 50 hours per week, oh. and I think that we should break down what you do as well, and then we yeah. can combine the hours and then start to talk about how much money we make. I'll do it daily like Keelan did, so I wake up, spend a few hours, I wake up after Keelan. Sarah needs her sleep, Yeah, yeah no, that's why I'm ugly as shit. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'll wake up and normally the first thing I'll do is like our emails, reply to comments, reply to direct messages. We did used to have a goal that we would reply to every single person who messaged us or commented, but um, lately it has gotten very overwhelming and we actually just like physically don't have enough hours in the day. Oh, it's great though. Yeah. We, we love hearing from you. It's and so nice. It blows us away how many people out there just 
like watch our videos because at the end of the day like we're looking at a camera right now so we don't actually see you guys standing there that we're talking to if, if it makes sense it's a bit loopy i know <laughs> so when we get the, the messages and people come up to us in real life and have a chat you know chew the fat a little bit we actually realize how many people we're making these videos for and they yeah. enjoy them so that's really why and we, we do, do it read all of the comments so yeah. like please know that if you are commenting and we haven't gotten back to you or something like yeah. we've read it and we're so grateful we so really yeah, appreciate it you. and um last time we had forty thousand, and i was yeah. replying to all the comments i think a few of the videos were getting 700 comments and to, to people that don't reply to comments, it's like a little bit of a, like an unfathomable number. It's like saying the speed of light is like three million meters per second squared or something like that. It's hard to fathom what that amount of time equals to. So yeah. for me, 700 comments will literally take me about four hours to yeah. sit down and do. And it's not just comments on YouTube. They're also on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook. And then you've got like direct messages on Facebook and Instagram. So yeah, it, it's a lot of time and I do struggle and Keelan struggles with the thought of not replying to every single person and we're talking to Ronnie Dahl at the Four Wheel Drive show about this topic and he put it, broke it down for us and he just said, guys, like your job is to create videos and to try and inspire or make people happy or educate. Your job is that. So the more time you spend sitting on your phone replying to individual people, the less time you're doing creating content that's going to help thousands of people. So we're like, oh. But to be honest with you, like just speaking on this is, oh, I'll, I'll get a little we're bit, I'll get yeah. a little bit vulnerable here, but like the pressure we feel to reply to everyone's comments is immense because we have so much respect. And if you've taken the time out of your day to support us, we feel like we need to give your comment the time and energy it deserves, yeah. if that makes sense. And when we physically can't do that, like we're not slacking off, like we're just punching out hours, you know what I mean? And we appreciate every single one of you guys. And uh, like I said, it has become like the comments have become a yeah. little bit overwhelming. But Sometimes we'll just sit down for hours and we'll try and just like get through as many as we can. We'll be replying to comments from like, a week ago and like trying to get back to everyone but yeah we try our best we can't thank you guys enough yeah. though like it's just amazing anyway where <laughs> were we okay so every morning we'll try and reply to as many comments and messages as we can um before putting too much time into that we'll do emails then we obviously do our filming so when we go out and film someone said how do you get your instagram stuff as well as your youtube stuff like, i'll either hold the camera while i'm filming drop kill and drive past and also have the phone there what are you doing keep going i'm just making a drink <laughs> i'm thirsty as hell it's like 40 degrees yeah, I know. um so yeah we'll either t do it twice and film it twice or we'll just like have both there trying to film both at the same time so yeah we do our filming we come home same as Keelan, we import all of our footage i'll make a few reels um they normally take around for like a generic reel that's normally like an hour to two hours and then for like one of those reels where you see like heaps of different clips from all of our travels those take bloody forever three hours just for one like 20 second reel and it's purely because you've got to go back through all of your old footage footage find all your best clips put it to music and yeah it takes forever so hectic yeah real take a few hours and then you've got photo posts as well they're a little bit quicker so maybe like an hour editing those that's sick i hope everyone <laughs> sort of gets the lingo when sarah says real she's talking about the instagram videos that you see on instagram so like a youtube short yeah essentially um and like we try to recycle content through all the platforms because if we were making individual content which a lot of people do i don't good, know how they do that good on them <laughs> because it takes a lot longer yeah so um, and then the last thing that we would do is our blog, which we only post to maybe like once a month now. Um, yeah. And yeah, we're trying to just like keep that to very valuable blogs and then we're working on doing some itineraries and stuff in the background. Yeah, valuable as in teaching you guys yeah. about what you guys want to know, not, not necessarily like what we think is <laughs> interesting. We just want to know what you guys want to hear yeah. about what interests you guys and how we're going to serve and help as many people as possible. So, so what do you think per week? Let's give a bit of a rough estimate. I reckon you'd do 50 hours a week in your side of the business, I reckon. Uh, yeah, probably because we spend at least six hours minimum a day on the phones and laptops. And we do it seven days a week. Yeah, we don't. Yeah. That's the other thing with YouTube is when you're working 
for yourself for something you're doing. You don't really take days off, like, because you know that you're working for yourself and towards the, an yeah. end goal for just you. Yeah. So, whereas, like, when you're working for a boss, like, you're not going to go on, in on a Saturday and Sunday and, like, do a little bit of extra work. You for know? free. You're not doing free work yeah. for, you know, time. And that comes back to that how much time are you sacrificing for that amount of money? Um, that's where it all comes down. So, like, a lot of people don't think we do very much work. And, hey, we probably only do six or seven hours a day, but we're doing that, you know, seven days a week. So, yeah. um, but like I said, filming, we love it. We love our job filming and stuff. It's just the editing that we actually class as a job. So, yeah, it's one of those things. And another thing is we're not very good at it. So if I was really good at editing, I know what you'd I'm like. You'd be quicker. As a, yeah, you'd be quicker. You'd actually enjoy it a lot more. Yeah. But because I suck at editing, it's a chore because I'm no good at it. We looked at old videos the other day. Don't go back oh, and watch our videos. So bad. Shocking. My God. Terrible. Yeah. So let's just say it's basically a full time job for us now. At the start, um, it we wasn't. weren't putting in that many hours. Probably like three hours a day. Yeah. And one of the most this is a good point as well. One of the most common questions we get asked is hey guys do you actually get to enjoy australia and traveling and like be a proper couple and all that stuff so the short answer is yes we do but it nef definitely takes a massive hit because yeah. one thing one of the things that i wish i knew at the very start when we picked up a camera and decided to do youtube is that the more you can commit to it wholeheartedly the better that you will do. And I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. If you're committing 100% at something, there's gotta be sacrifice on the other end because there's not infinite hours in the day. Yeah. And uh, it definitely takes a toll, not only on how much enjoyment you have around Australia, but also as a couple, like less times that we're actually doing stuff that normal couples do, because at yeah. the end of the day, we're living in a little sea container sized box and we're running a business and we don't get any time to ourselves. So there's a lot yeah. of like, sort of bad things that come with YouTube. Um, and we've had our fair share of Barneys over yeah. this whole venture. Like if you think it's all just sunshine and rainbows, it's really not. It is like really hard working and living and doing this whole thing with your partner. Um, but yeah, we wouldn't change it for the world no, because we love we're it. working for ourselves and yeah. together. So. And it definitely helps if you're in love with your partner. <laughs> So like not yeah, only if you don't love your partner, maybe don't travel Australia. Yeah, with them. <laughs> yeah. So like people ask us all the time, how do you survive in this caravan full time with each other? Like I can barely go a weekend with my partner. Like we get questions like that all the time, and I, it honestly just comes down to the fact that like, yeah, you will have disagreements, but you've just got to learn how to deal with those. And running a business together, because at the end of the day, I don't really like calling what we do a business, but I guess it is because it is our job, and we own our jobs so I guess it is a business and running it with your partner definitely has its struggles yeah we definitely still go out and do cool things without the camera running I want to make that clear too yeah. because a lot of people say oh is traveling now a job for you guys and essentially it is a job now but we still really enjoy it and like I said the filming is just sick like what a dream job and last few weeks we've been bolting accessories to Leroy um, which is coming out next week as well so stay tuned for that Leroy's the car. <laughs> yeah, Le oh yeah, for people that don't know, Leroy's our tow vehicle. And uh, like, how good's that? Like, I got to sit in a shed all day with me old man, me brother, and we we're just bolting up stuff to the car, you know, having a laugh, having fun. And, and you know, I can actually class that as, I work today, you know, I work today. And that was hanging out with my brother and my dad. So like, yeah. it's freaking amazing. And that's where it comes back to. We always say to people have a crack at youtube i'll keep saying this there's nothing special about us you can 100 percent do it all you need is a camera and an internet signal and the guts to actually be yourself on camera because that's a massive um clue as well just be yourself don't try to be someone that you're not because you're faking it and it won't go as far as if you just yeah. be yourself so yeah. yeah and if you have kids and stuff it's doable as well isn't it yeah. But, but how, we don't know because we don't have kids and I don't know how you do it. Honestly, like, yeah, we struggle just keeping up with all of our stuff now, just the two of us. So those who have kids and do it, like, honestly, we take our hats off to you guys. Cause, Good on you. Yeah, <laughs> Shit. it's just next level way. Yeah. All right, so 100 Wait, hours. What the hell were we just talking about? We are talking about our hours. So 100 hours, let's just say 100. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to revenue. How we make money, how you can make money. Free Toyotas out the bloody ears. <laughs> free caravans 
<laughs> Let's get into it. So before we get into our different revenue streams, we're going to talk about how we actually started, which we've already spoken about. So Briefly. Yeah. Um, we basically started in 2021. I'm a high school teacher. Keelan is an electrician. And we're sick of 9 to 5. Very cliche. Um, we've had a few people pass in our lives young, and we've just seen, all right, well, anything can happen. You really are not guaranteed tomorrow. So, And we quit our jobs in 2021 to do a lap of Australia we were hoping it'd be around one to two years we are now obviously three and a bit years in and still going and we've made full made YouTube our full-time job um, before we took off we owned our car we owned our caravan we didn't have a house we didn't have any loans and we literally saved up all of our money to use around Australia 20 grand and then 20 grand yeah. and like Sarah said no overheads at all yeah so we didn't have any costs living on the road it was literally just us and all of our savings and we had planned that if we started running out of cash that we would just stop and do a bit of teacher or sparky work and then get back on the road so yeah, yeah. that so, was our original plan <laughs> and the reason we started the YouTube was because we didn't want to bombard our friends on Instagram with all these travel shots while they were working still um, so we started our separate Instagram and I said to Sarah I said how about we start a YouTube channel and at the start like we sucked we were nervous to talk to the camera just the general stuff like it was just a real hard time to really be ourselves because we were so consumed by people judging us and yeah. thinking oh what will people think you know and, and we've, we're over that now like we're well, ourselves we still get a little bit nervous about judgment and stuff like it's hard not to but yeah because you're putting yourself out yeah. there at the end of the day we're just trying not to think about it <laughs> yeah so that's the reason we started we didn't start to make money we actually started the YouTube to let mum and dad know and show them where we're going and also show maybe our kids if we can have kids one day hopefully if yeah show them hey this is what i was doing back in bloody my day you know and you know <laughs> it's gonna we're gonna sound pretty old when we're saying that but um yeah it's just cool like it's a video diary of what you were getting up to so yeah that's pretty much why we started it um and then obviously now it's our full-time job so we're super grateful and yeah yeah crazy so, so let's our hit first, our revenue streams our first revenue stream obviously our main one's youtube but we'll save that for last so we can show you exactly how much we made this month uh, our first one would be Instagram sponsorships. We don't tend to do too many of these. We sort of do like one or two a month. Um, and the different types of sponsorships are obviously like a story for a brand, a post or a reel. And you have different structures of how you charge a company depending on how many followers you have, what your engagement rate is. So that means how many people are liking your post, how many people are commenting on your post and how many people are messaging you. Yeah. Um, a few things I just want to hit on that too so just to break it down even further if Kim Kardashian just to make it really easy for you is to understand because this will become a pretty foreign to a lot of people so say we're promoting this cup and now this oh, is the same back. cup <laughs> as the last time we made this video so Kim Kardashian was getting paid to promote this cup Kim Kardashian has a hundred million million millions <laughs> followers like a huge amount she will get paid exponentially more than someone like us that still has a relatively small following so that is how it, it, it is and then yeah. small followings with big engagement will get more money for posts and stuff from companies because their engagement is higher yeah. so that's more valuable to the company if that makes yeah. sense so if you have two people with a hundred thousand followers the one with the higher engagement will have more revenue coming into that that account themselves. And there's a few different programs that companies will use to find out your engagement. So um, if someone has told you to buy fake followers or something like that, please do not do that because brands can see that. It's very obvious that you don't have a real following. Yeah. Um, all they need to do is type your name into this software and it comes up with who's organic and real on your following and then what your engagement rate is and stuff. Yeah. So, don't yeah, do that. there's a massive thing at the moment where people buy followers and stuff, so please do not do and, that. It's so bad. And it's like a bit of a kick in the guts to the people that are actually working hard to to to, to grow themselves and stuff. Like, yeah. there's everyone, there's a heap of people paying by the, the this set of rules, but then there's some people that think that they can just buy tens of thousands of followers and yeah. then get brand deals and stuff but it's all built off of fake following it's pretty much fraudulent so yeah it's fraud it, so when it comes to pricing your sponsored ads what you can use is a few different websites literally if you just type in influencer pricing in australia it will come up with how to work that out 
We typically to base ours typically base ours off Tribe Australia. They've got some breakdown like that. Yeah, of different pricing. So just go on there, find what your followers are, what your engagement is, and then you can base your pricing off that. So yeah, that's normally we'll do like one or two a month. Um, yeah. Not too many. And it's a question we get all the time is people saying, how much do I charge for this and that? And it's all different, depends on your statistics and your yeah. demographic and stuff. Um, but on what Sarah's saying, we get hit up by companies every single day and you will get more and more companies sort of sliding into your inbox wanting you to promote their products for them. But a lot of the times um, they, they want you to do it for you know the wrong reasons or something like that and say, we bought and paid for this cup. If this cup company came to us and said, hey, do you want to promote the cup? We'd be like, great, we love the cup. We've already bought it. We paid full price of the cup. We love it. So we're well, happy to share that. That would be the Bush Company. Yeah. So we bought a secondhand Bush Company awning. We've been running it for over a year now. It's been amazing, so good. And they came up to us at the show and they just said, hey guys, like, would you like to jump on board with us? Like, we see you run the Bush Company awning and we're like, yeah, yeah, we would. Yeah. Like, we love your product, and yeah. and we're, we're happy, amazing. and we think our audience will get value out of that. It'll help yeah. a lot of people if I say, "Hey, check this awning out. It's freaking sick." You might not have seen that awning, or even knew it was available. Yeah. Like, you don't have to put the legs down. Blah blah blah. That is a collaboration we do because before we talk about all the brands we work with and how all the sponsorship works, we just want to make one thing freaking clear: is that your integrity should be everything to you. Like when you start a YouTube or a, or an Instagram or something, don't just say yes to every single brand because there will be a lot of shit stuff offered to you, like a lot of yeah. crap stuff, trust us. A lot of shit gets put, pushed on you. you. We say no to probably 99.8% of things, yeah. no matter what they're trying to pay you. Because if you get paid $10,000 to promote this junky shit, 5,000 people go out and buy it and it's crap. You've just misled 5,000 5, people. people. You know, and they've spent their hard-earned cash on that, and they're them people that are buying it. The only reason that you have a following that you can make this your job, so you need to treat your audience with the most utmost respect. Because without them, and I get very passionate about this, but without your audience, you are f all. Like you are nothing without your audience. So make sure whatever you promote across any of your channels, you 100% believe in it. It's something you would promote to your nana. Your nana would run it. Your parents would run it something that you believe in for the right reasons. If you are a photographer or you own a good camera or a videographer, you can then offer them photography or videography and you can sell your, sell your images or videos to that company for them to use for digital marketing. So sometimes we'll do photography work for businesses. We are amateurs, like yeah, we're we still suck. learning. So that yep. is like one of our lower revenue streams, but um, it's still something that we do to make a little bit of Money yeah. on the side. For instance, you'd photograph this cup with without us in the shot at all, so you wouldn't see our faces or anything, and it would just be like the table or something, and just get a nice photo of the cup, and then that company will buy the photo off you, um, and use that photo for their advertising. Yeah. That's that's what pretty much in a nutshell what that is. Yeah. And again, you can find jobs like that off Tribe, so that that one there that, on the App Store. So yeah. yeah. Um, and on that, I was just going to say like how we get these sort of sponsorships. Like we said, heaps of people reach out to us, but we actually find it very organic to reach out to companies that we believe in. So yeah. for the 200 build, you we, had everything picked out. Yeah, so two years prior to building that 200 series, that was always my dream car. And I manifested and thought and dreamt of every single modification I put on that vehicle. I overthought, I rethought, and then I executed. And I pretty much hit up all the companies that I wanted to put their accessories on the car. The way we do it is if we know that we wanted an accessory on the car that we, we knew we wanted because it was lightweight, good quality, blah, blah, blah. We actually approached that company and said, hey, do you want to work with us in this capacity, blah, blah, blah. We're doing a build series. Just pretty much pitched what we were about to do. Yeah. And then the company would either not reply, they would reply, say they're not interested or reply and say, hey, we'd love to jump on board. We love what you're doing. Um, we've you know, followed you for a while, yeah. and it can be very, very beneficial for you. Uh, for instance, some of the products we got on the Land Cruiser, we got a discount on, we didn't get a lot of it for free, but we did get like 20% off some things, like 30% off some things, which if you're looking at a bull bar or a rear bar or whatever it is, it's expensive stuff. So 20% off can be like 500 bucks, which is a lot of money. And um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much how we've got our foot in the door with a lot of different companies. 
And uh, we don't probably, to the ratio of hitting companies up ourselves to people coming to us, it would probably be about 70% coming to us, 30% us hitting up, I'd say. But um, yeah, like like I said, it's it's very organic if you choose that product and then, then you work with that company and opposed to that company approaching you and then you promoting their shitty product, yeah. whatever it is, so. All right, so coming off brands, we then have affiliate marketing. If you've never heard of affiliate marketing before, it's basically where the affiliates will promote a product and they will receive a commission when someone uses their discount code or their product link. So we could have a, a discount code for this cup. So buy this cup and use the code SKT, you'll get 10% off this cup. It's a really good cup, we love it, blah, blah, blah. You go and buy this cup using our discount code and then the, the cup company will pay us like a dollar. Well, it well, depends. It, it depends de on different companies. What commission rate, but yeah, like they'll pay you a certain cut of the, the proceeds to, of the cup. So that's pretty much affiliate marketing in a nutshell. It's extremely risky because you're not guaranteed any money there. Like we said, YouTube is our main and most consistent form of income because we're actually producing videos if we produce four videos a week and, and four times our content, we're going to get not four times the output, but we're going to get an increased output. So you can sort of control how much you earn on YouTube to a certain extent yeah. with Whereas affiliate marketing. You can't control that. No, it's random. Yeah. Like we said with brand sponsorships, if you're trying to get on with a company with affiliate marketing, make sure it is something you genuinely believe in that you would be happy for your mum and your dad and your grandma and your pa to buy. Like Sarah said, make sure you believe in the product, believe in the company, and do all of what we're talking about yeah. for the right reasons. And if, use the products for a long period of time before you jump on board with them yeah. with a affiliate code. Find a product, this is our biggest tip, find a product that's actually gonna help people and solve an issue. Yeah. That's what we would recommend. Don't just promote anything. All right, so our last revenue stream before we get into the YouTube hot topic is our merchandise. Now, a year ago, we literally had one t-shirt and we were, <laughs> we had a hundred made and we, I don't think we even sold that hundred. No, we sold like 40, <laughs> we gave 30 away, so yeah. that's 70 shirts. And then I think 30, we've actually, funniest story ever. The other day, one of our followers on Instagram actually sent us a photo of our oh, first shirt shop. at the op shop. So someone's bought it and then traded it, or traded in, thrown it in at the op shop. So that's how good our shirts were. They were absolutely crap. But shout out to the people that bought an OG yeah. shirt. They're and still going, like they're still good shirts. I still have mine, it's still good quality. They just yeah. were a simple design. Very simple design, but high quality <laughs> cotton. But yeah, shout out to anyone that's got one of those things because they are rare as hen's teeth. And I think there's only about 40 in circulation. So <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Um, but yeah, so merch. yeah, now we have two different t-shirts and in two different colors so this is um, one of them and we're pretty proud proud of these ones like we think these are pretty nice good quality so yeah we're stoked with those it's still not a big income like we would we mainly make our merchandise for the one show a year we do so. yeah so we might sell you know two hundred dollars in merch a week sort of thing like it's not a lot not but then even. you've got <laughs> you've then you've got to factor in how much it costs to make the merch so I would say merchandise is probably our lowest earning stream. Would yeah. that be fair to say? We don't even make church a week. No, but the thing about merch is it's it's a way for people to support you, like support you if you make yeah. a channel. So um, I would say go for merch, but just don't do massive quantities straight up because yeah. we've seen a few people go in real hard, buy a lot of shirts with their logos and stuff and then not be able to sell them. Well, and look then at us, we had a hundred shirts made and we literally had those under our couch for over a year trying to sell them. So, so we learned the hard way, definitely. Yeah. So yeah, just start off with a small quantity. Yeah. So there's a few tips in the last sort of five minutes is don't promote shitty products. Yeah. Don't, if you're going to get merch, don't get huge order quantities because they're like, the order quantities caught us by surprise, didn't yeah. it? It definitely did. We didn't sell many, but hey, it's all good. And if you did want to go buy some merch, we do have so extra extra smalls all the way up to triple xls we've got enough about merch so we make around a 200 dollars a week but it probably costs us a hundred dollars just for the materials but the good thing about merch is it's a way you guys can support us so if you did want to support the channel support us we've got hats we've got stickers we've now got patches stubby holders stubby holders these are sick cord hats like i wear these hats day in day out i love the look of them and uh, yeah, they fit my head and I think I've got the biggest head in the world. Like the circumference, I think it's like a 63. But it's adjustable. 63 centimeter, yeah, full adjustable hat. Um, two different 
shirt designs in different colors and we've got extra smalls all the way up to triple xls so like i said guys i am doing the world's greatest shave for leukemia such a great cause and if you did want to jump on the bandwagon because we are trying to raise a huge amount of money to help as many people as possible all you have to do is go on our website buy some merch while this greater shave is happening and we're going to donate 10 percent of all the money that we get from merch for the next few months to that greater shave so if you did want something tangible but still want to support the the cause and help us help people then buy a shirt, buy a hat, and you are supporting that cause. And we're going to show you. We've been thinking about buying some merchandise. Now is the perfect time because 10% of that money is going to go to a good cause. Yeah, 100%. So we are trying to do good with our platform and help as many people as possible. So I am going to be shaving these locks off. And like <laughs> I said earlier, we're going to do stages. So hit the subscribe button. We're going to be shaving mullets. We're going to be shaving all sorts of stuff. Sarah's gonna probably leave me. That's how ugly I'm gonna look. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're gonna try to help as many freaking people as possible. So please help us, help us help people. And um, yeah, I, I just wanna help as many people and raise a bullshit amount of money. Yeah, it's just gonna be sick. I, I reckon we can do it too. Because if we've got 83,000 subscribers, if everyone just donates $1, imagine that. If everyone just puts $1, dollars. my goal is 40 grand. I and mean, I know that's pretty high, but I'm just saying like, Aim high. <laughs> Aim high. Surely we can get a dollar out of everyone. It's not even enough to catch the bus at the moment. So, <laughs> so anyway, jump on that good cause, guys. Yeah. I'll put a QR code in the bottom of the screen. So just get your phone, scan that. That'll go to the donation page. And that's where you can put your donations in on the actual Greater Shave, um, my profile. Um, yeah, anyway, I'm frothing that though. <laughs> I cannot wait to do that. It's going to be sick. All right, before we show you our back end of YouTube and how much we make, I think it's really important to note that it took us around a year and a half to start making an income from YouTube. Before that, we were making like $50 a week. It was quite like up and down. Um, so yeah, so you got to like do... A, it's like an apprenticeship. Yeah, you got to do your apprenticeship. You got to learn before you earn, essentially. So you got to commit to that. And like I said, you got to wholeheartedly commit if you're going to do it to not earning a single cent for the first year and a half. Some people can, some people are... Yeah crazy they just come out of the blocks and they're flying but we're just yep. speaking on personal experience here and like we said we're pretty average sort of people so if we can set ourselves as the benchmark year and a half before we started making any money but hey you might be more cool than us <laughs> I don't know but you know you could make money a lot faster but yeah it took us yeah. a year and a half all right we just quickly wanted to add in one more thing under sponsorship so one of the questions that we get a lot is is your caravan or your car for free and the answer to that is no. We <laughs> to pay <for> Toyota's <laughs> not giving out free cars to anyone. I don't think yeah, anyway. Yeah. Not not us, that's for sure. So yeah. second can second can second hand car and the caravan is brand new. But yeah. we do pay for our caravan as well and uh, it's definitely not free, is yeah. it? And if you'd like to know more about our caravan sponsorship, we just released a walk around video of the whole caravan and we sit down and we go through that a little bit in detail. Um, but no, we don't get it for free. We pay for it all. Um, We're not under contract with Urban Caravans either. So at any stage, we can choose not to run this van, sell it and go buy any caravan we want. So I'll tell you what guys, what I'll do is I'll link that video um, to our caravan walk around, which talks about our sponsorships with Urban Caravan, how it works all the details regarding that after this video. So stick around and it'll automatically play. Hopefully you might have to click on it after this video. So anyway, thought I'd throw that in. Yeah. The time has come. We're gonna show you the computer screen that literally says how much money we made this month off YouTube. I'm gonna show you the back end, how much YouTube's paid us this month, but I wanna explain how it all works because one of the most asked questions we get is how does it actually work? Who's paying us? Where's this money coming from? Um, it must seem like it's coming from out of our ass or something, honestly. But YouTube pays us and YouTube is owned by Google, right? So Google is the, the person paying us. And the reason they can pay us is because companies are p paying Google to put ads on our videos. Essentially, YouTube takes a cut, which is essentially Google. And then we get a cut of the money that that advertiser is paying Google, if that makes sense. So that comes down to views and how many ads you put on your videos. now. For us personally, when we we always select automatic ads and then we go in and delete half the ads because we don't want our videos to be an ad every two minutes. Everyone gets pissed off at that. Um, it's not enjoyable to watch. I personally hate it, so I'm not gonna do it to you guys. So essentially, we could be making a lot more money than this if we just let the ads put it 
if we just put the automatic ads in the video because Google and YouTube obviously want to put as many ads in your videos as possible because they're going to make more money doing that as well. So essentially, it comes down to how many views you get and how many ads you put on your videos. Plus, you have to be a part of the YouTube Partner Program, which to, to get into that, you have to have, I think, at least 500 subscribers. And I'm not too sure, but it used to be 400 hours of watch time. One last thing I want to add about that is that if you guys watch our ads all the way through, we definitely get more money if you watch the ads in their entirety. However, if you skip the ad, we still get a little cut, but if you want to support us, watch our ads all the way through, and we actually get more money per view, if that makes sense, if you did want to support us. If you didn't, just keep skipping the ads, whatever. It's all good, but um, anyway. Just editing this video right here, and there's one thing we forgot to mention. So YouTube Premium, so people pay premium and they skip all of our ads. All the ads on YouTube, we do get a small cut of your subscription. So whatever videos you watch during your monthly subscription to YouTube Premium, every video creator gets a small cut of your subscription. Don't So don't stress, you're still supporting us, and we very much appreciate your support. Plus Patreon, so we do have a Patreon. We have a really tight-knit community on Patreon. They receive our videos a week early, and uh, I think we make around 400 and something dollars per month on Patreon, so around $100 a week. I know we get a lot of questions about that as well. We're in the back end here, and I wanna explain all the different things we can see. So, this is our content in a nutshell. This is the last 28 days, if you can see up in this top part of the screen here. So, in the last 28 days, we've had 355,000 views. We've had 3.6 million impressions, so that's how many times our thumbnails have been shown to people on their homepage and explore pages. And on them thumbnails, we've had an average of around 4.85% click-through rate. On average, people are watching our videos for 23 minutes straight. That's our average uh, view duration, which is awesome. That's amazing. Um, that gives us a little pat on the back and says, hey, you guys are making half decent videos. They're all right and people are actually watching the video for a little while, so that's good, I, I really like that. Let's go to our audience, let's have a look at this tab because I can see a lot of information about you guys here. So this purple line represents existing viewers and the blue line represents new viewers. So as you can see there, let's have a look at our last video which was our Q&A video. Returning viewers we had 15,000 and the new viewers we had 2,200. So that amount there are the people that are finding our channel for the very first time which is freaking awesome. We've got, got 92.4K returning viewers. Yeah. So that means there's 10,000 people that watch that don't subscribe. Pretty well. That's no. Great. Yeah. No. Returning viewers? I'll, I'll show you the subscribe, not subscribe. That'll blow your mind, Sarah. It's oh. actually crazy. Anyway, <laughs> it gives us some channels our audience also watches. So Fall Drive 24-7, All 4 Adventure, Trip and a Van, TJ, Elnick. They're all fantastic channels, so that's wicked. Our audience has very good taste in channels there. They're all awesome. Um, so that's pretty cool to see. Um, down here, we can see what our popular times people, our audience, actually watch YouTube. So as you can see here, the dark purple, um, sorry, the light purple is all times where peop a lot of people are on YouTube. So Saturdays, Sundays, we actually post Fridays. Um, it tells you what videos they've, your viewers have also watched. And I'm only getting started here because it gets a bit fruity after a while. Um, we've got all sorts of stuff like not subscribe to subscribe. So the, the stat that Sarah was just talking about. So we've got 73% are not subscribed. Only 26% of our viewers are subscribed. Wow. So if you are getting this content and it is free, if you do enjoy it, the easiest way to support us is hitting that red button. It's super easy to do. It's free. It doesn't cost you a cent. And let's try to get that stat up right there because that tells me, yeah, a lot of people aren't subscribing. And if you want to win some free stuff, because everyone likes free shit, subscribe, it's super easy. Anyway, let's go into age demographics. We've got an even split pretty much all the way from uh, 18 year olds to 65 year olds. So that's super cool. That's rare these days that you have such a diverse pe a range of people watching. So whether you're 18 or 65, good on your legend, keep watching. <laughs> But um, yeah, that's sick. And then we've got demographics here. So let's click on that. So subtitles to not subtitles. 10% of people have to enable subtitles. So they, they're, either, they're either deaf, which isn't a funny thing. But the funny thing is if they can't actually understand what we're saying. So subtitles, 10% of people are saying they're on. Um, we've got all sorts of different subtitles here. We've got English, Spanish, French, Arabic. Arabic? How you say that? <laughs> anyway. We've got all sorts of different subtitles here. So shout outs if you are those subtitles. Um, let's go 
let's go top geographies. We'll, we'll, we'll show you who our top geographies are. Pretty standard, Australia's number one. Then we've got United States, New Zealand, South Africa, United Kingdom. And if you want to be real fruity, if we scroll right down here, we've got Albania, Zimbabwe, Venezuela, Nam Nam Namibia, I think it's called, um, Austria. So we've got people from literally all across the world watching, which is super sick. So shout out if you are across the world right now. You definitely can't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> That's the 10% of subtitles. Then. <laughs> yeah. uh, this, it's cool, eh? Hey? Like, you can see a lot of stuff on here. And this is something that I've never seen on YouTube shown either. Uh, male, female split. So this only goes off, like, what account that you're watching on. So even if you were on your husband's account, but you're um, a lady watching it, it'll come up across as your husband's watching it. So this stat isn't 100% true, but we've got 20% female, 80% male. So shout out to you guys. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Um, but yeah, we're going through everything right now, but the one thing you guys want to know is revenue. Now let's get into that. So I'll click my overview tab right here and I'm going to run you through the stats on how much we get paid this month. So. This month, like I said, we've had 360,000 views. We've had 138.9 thousand hours of watch time. So that's collectively over everyone. We've gained 1.6 thousand subscribers. So thank you so much for subscribing. That's wicked. And we've made $7,700. So that is a sick amount of money. Um, we are stoked with that. Um, we are so grateful for you guys because without you, we don't get that. And uh, that, that, that amount, that amount of money is freaking awesome. We are so grateful. Um, that is split across me and Sarah. So let's do a quick rundown on that. I'll grab my phone out. Let's do the split. So me and Sarah reckon we do 50 hours a week each. So let's go $7,734. Let's divide that by two people. That's $3,867 each per month from YouTube. So we're gonna divide that by four and we'll get our weekly per person. So $966 per person, so me and Sarah, and if you divide that by 50 hours a week, we get $19.30 per hour. So that doesn't sound like a lot of money, but it is for us, like that's huge for us. And um, we are super happy with that amount of money. And, and to be honest with you, don't start a YouTube for the money. Do it to help people, to inspire people. And any sort of money that you get, like what we're getting, 19 bucks an hour, will be, that's enough for us. As long as we can go buy a nice coffee and a bloody pie, we're happy. So anyway, that just shows you guys, um, you might not think 19 bucks is a lot of money, but for us it is. And uh, yeah, that's how much work goes into it. So I hope you've enjoyed the backend analytics of our YouTube channel. Um, we're gonna try to make this a yearly thing every year come back and, and show you guys this because it's something that you guys can join us on this journey too and help us um, make content for you guys so yeah shout out to everyone watching right now because you are supporting this and supporting me and Sarah and, and we couldn't do it without you. Alright guys we hope that you guys have gotten a lot out of this video like we said it was purely to try and help you if you're thinking about making a YouTube channel or working online and we hope that it's also inspired some people out there because yeah, what have you got to lose? You may as well give it a shot. Um, and look what happened to us. Like, we are the most average people in the world and we've made this work and it's all thanks to you guys. You enjoy our videos and we love making them for you. So it is a win-win. And one thing we didn't speak about though is the easiest and most effective way to make money around Australia. And that is how, Sarah? Picking up casual work. <laughs> Picking up casual work. Everyone's screaming for workers. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you're a chippy, you're a, you're a sparky, you're a labourer, you're an accountant, you're a nurse. You can get Barista. money. Hairdresser. We've oh, seen it all. <laughs> Some even working out of caravan parks. You can make money doing anything these days. Yeah. So don't be scared to just hook that van up or put that rooftop tent on the van. Even throw the tent in the back of the car and just hit the road. Go look at Australia because 100% you can do it. First of all, you can do it on the cheap. But also you can do it without actually doing any of the stuff that we do. However... Yeah. If you do want to have a crack at what we do, hopefully today we've provided the information that people don't like to talk about. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've had a laugh, and uh, we'll see you next time.